name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. of all the saints. Bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count, from every nation, race, 
people and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, who are these wearing white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, my Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. And yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall later what we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Oh 
our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church is called Catholic because it is the universal church. When we say universal church, we don't just mean the universe here on earth. Because we have a nice little universe here on earth, but when we say Catholic, we just don't mean the earth as in universal. When we speak of the universal Catholic church, or Catholic meaning universal, that's what it means, universal, we speak of the church on earth, in purgatory, and in heaven. Which is why the church is not a denomination. We haven't denominated from anybody. We are the nomination. <laughs> it's from us that every other Christian has denominated. We are the nomination. In other words, the name Catholic is the name given to us to express the reality of the universality of the church on earth, in purgatory, and in heaven. When we speak of the church on earth, we speak of the church militant. We are the church militant. We're fighting through this world to get to the glory of heaven. When we speak of the church in purgatory, we speak of the church suffering because presently there are suffering as they await the kingdom of heaven. They are being purified of their sins and made ready for heaven. Once you get to purgatory, there's only one way out, heaven. That's the good thing about being in purgatory. You want to shoot for heaven, if you miss, you land in purgatory, you'll do okay, you'll make it to heaven. Don't shoot for purgatory because if you miss, the last option is not so good, right? So the church in purgatory, we talk, talk about the church suffering. They are dependent upon our prayers and we have to ask them for prayer because they have to learn to be selfless in order to enter the fullness of the kingdom of heaven. So we speak of the church in heaven as the church in glory. The church in glory. On Monday, we will remember the souls in purgatory. We'll remember all those who passed. And so we have the names of those who passed this previous year there before the uh, other ambo with the candles and each, in honor of each of those who have passed from our parish. And so we'll remember them in our prayers, particularly on Monday, but we'll pray for all the deceased as well, that the Lord will gather them to himself into the glory of the kingdom of heaven. But today we celebrate the church in glory. We celebrate all of our brothers and sisters who made it into the glory of the kingdom of heaven. The reason why the church has one day for all the saints is because there are so many, it's impossible for us to give all the names of those who made it. Of those who are actually canonized or beatified by the church is just a small amount of the multitude that have reached the glory of the kingdom of heaven. And today we rejoice with them, we think of them, and we look to them for inspiration. We ask them for their prayers, that they will pray for us 
we, the church militant, to help us through this battle here on earth to reach the glory of the kingdom. You know, we think about the church in heaven, we think about so many various saints who've gone before us, and their lives give us hope because there's such a mixed group of saints. Among them are certain saints who were very holy from their childhood, like Saint Padre Pio. People who did amazing work through their life, like Saint Mother Teresa. Great leaders like Pope Saint John Paul II or Saint Louis of France. But then there are some other characters who made it to heaven because at one point in their life they turned away from sin and accepted the grace of God. Saints like Saint Augustine of Hippo, who for 30 years lived a life of debauchery, had a child out of wedlock and was living with a woman when he experienced the powerful mercy of God and gave his life to the Lord and became the most incredible mind in the history of the world. Literary-wise, literary he was the first to write an autobiography ever. And then we have other more recent saints beatified, like Blessed Piquita, who was a slave, who was sold from one slave owner to another. She even forgot her name, which is why they called her Piquita, the lucky one. Eventually, her slave owner took her to Italy. She discovered that Italy didn't have slavery. She claimed her freedom. She became a religious sister. And when the children would see the scars on her arms, they would say, oh, those horrible people who did those things to you. And she said, no, if I met my slave owners today, I would kiss their hands and thank them because their cruelty brought me to Christ. And she would often pray at her baptismal font where she was baptized as an adult, thanking God for the gift of the true freedom she received from sin. And then we have other saints who lived regular lives in the world, like our recently beatified Gianna Mola. She died in the 1970s. She was a doctor, pregnant with a third child. She was in danger of death, and she had the option of either aborting her child or dying in childbirth, and she refused to take her own child's life. And she gave birth, thanks be to God, to a healthy child, but she died and gave her life for her child. I had the great honor of actually meeting her daughter, an incredible woman, a doctor, who lived a very holy life. And her husband, a beautiful man, Pietro, published uh, their love letters between each other, and a beautiful book of their love letters of this married couple. And then we have Louis and Zelie of France, a married couple, the parents of Saint Therese. This husband and wife who lived a holy life, who sought holiness and raised six daughters. I guess that would make you a saint anyway. <laughs> but certainly they persevered in holiness of life and raised six beautiful daughters and both of them canonized and they were canonized together as husband and wife. And then we have saints who struggled with other things in life like Saint Joseph of Cupertino who had the worst case of ADD that anybody could possibly ever have. The poor guy couldn't pay attention for more than five minutes before he was distracted. And yet he would fall into ecstasies of prayer, be elevated off the ground to the point where he spent more time in the air than he did on the ground. When he would pray, he would just be elevated off the ground. And the Lord would draw him to himself. And then saints who struggled with other things like Saint Benedict Joseph Labore. He wanted to become a monk, but he couldn't because he had a mental illness. His depression led him to be suicidal at times, and he struggled and fought against suicide, struggled against his depression. Some days he would stand on the bridge wanting to throw himself off, but he would fight against this, this depression, and he would persevere through, and he would travel from shrine to shrine, living a very holy life as a simple man struggling against his own mental illness and reached sanctity of life, reached holiness of life, and has become the patron of the mentally ill. He re rejoiced in the gift of being received in the glory of heaven. Other saints like Saint Rita, who had a horrible marriage, her husband was terrible to her and to the kids and the family and all the family issues, the amount of family drama this woman had to go through was incredible. And yet she reached holiness of life. 
When the church canonizes somebody, it's because that person, no matter what their struggles were, no matter what their battles were in this life, they persevered in virtue and in holiness. And some of them had to fight through very difficult, difficult times to maintain that holiness of life, to enter into deep intimacy with God, to live a life of heroic virtue, to reach that beatitude that our Lord spoke about today in the gospel. They spur our song to look at our own lives and know that there is no difficulty, there is no struggle before us that with God's grace we cannot overcome. You know, you and I, we were created to know God, to love God, to serve Him in this world, and to be with Him forever in heaven. We were created for heaven, and God has given us every grace to reach that glory of heaven. And that is the end goal of life. The end goal of life is to become a saint. If we don't get the perfect job we want in life, we'll do okay. Our 401ks aren't the best of what they expect them to be, we'll be all right. We'll have different struggles and difficulties through life. Each of us will have various crosses. We persevere with the Lord. We'll do okay in life. But if we don't become saints, then we've blown it. <laughs> if we don't make it to heaven, then we've wasted our lives. Because the goal is to get to the glory of the kingdom of heaven. I always tell young people, become a saint or die trying. <laughs> become a saint or die trying. We have so many saints in heaven. Perhaps some of our own relatives have reached the glory of the kingdom of heaven, God willing they have, who are praying for us, interceding for us, assisting us. We need to open our hearts to receive that grace, to face each and every challenge before us with heroic virtue, to fight hard, to live that holy life that God has required of us. And eventually, when we close our eyes on this world, to open our eyes on the beautiful face of Christ and hear those precious words that each of us long to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Father and the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Today, we celebrate all of the saints in glory. All the saints, every one of them. And we remember the fact that you and I are also called to be saints, to reach that glory, to reach that kingdom, to reach our heavenly home. When people would say to Mother Teresa, you're a saint, she would say, aren't we all called to be saints? We are. Or as scripture says, be holy, for the Lord your God is holy. May we this day receive the grace, cooperate with grace, that you and I may reach that glory of the kingdom for which we have been predestined and rejoice forever with our brothers and sisters in the church in glory. May God bless you and Mary keep you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to our Heavenly Father, we pray for Holy Father Pope Francis that the Lord may guide him, the Holy Spirit convict him of all truth, that he may lead the church in holiness. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of our bishops and priests that they may celebrate the sacraments worthily and well, live holy lives and lead their people in the ways of holiness. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the grace to cooperate with grace that we ourselves may one day attain the fullness of the glory of heaven. We pray to the Lord. For all the souls in purgatory, especially our deceased loved ones, that this day they may reach the fullness of divine life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those we know who are struggling physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, that this day they might know the healing power of Christ. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our country that as we approach this election that we might elect leaders who will defend unborn life, leaders who will truly put God first. We pray to the Lord. And for the intentions we hold in the silence of our own hearts. Father, you called us to the waters of baptism and have given us every grace necessary to reach the glory of that kingdom where you live with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assuredly of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those who exalted members of the church. 
through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended. He took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. In memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Benedict our Pope Emeritus, Robert our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Who him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall die.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of your heavenly homeland. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We've got a couple of announcements. I always say announcements are good because it means our church is alive. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who donated to the Nativity set. Uh, we have everything already. Within By Wednesday, all the pieces for the new Nativity set have been purchased. And uh, one I forgot too was the angel. So we got the angel as well. I forgot to add that one to the list of the paper, but somebody donated for the angel. And I think we have a couple extra sheep too. So I won't tell you in whose memory the donkey was given. I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> Also, the Calvary Prayer Garden, thanks be to God, we have, um, we're given uh, sufficient for the donation for the crucifix for the garden, which allowed us to get a nicer one than I was planning, because we've been so generous, it was amazing. So, thank you to all those who donated to the crucifix for the Calvary Prayer Garden, which as you know, James Alderton is, an, is doing an Eagle Scout project, and he's making a beautiful little garden near the Paris Center. It's going to be a little hill with flowers and stone around it with a beautiful life-size crucifix facing Main Street with a couple of benches there for prayers. So we're putting a little prayer garden and we're going to proclaim Christ crucified to Main Street. So uh, you can drive by and pray, walk by and pray, stop and pray. We hired a new maintenance man. His name is Paul Mancini. If you see him around, please welcome him. He's doing a nice job already, getting things taken care of. So uh, wonderful fellow. So uh, it's God's grace that we finally, after nine months being here, we were able to fulfill that position. Last night we had a, that, uh, uh, that uh, COVID-19 social distance dinner with young adults. I had seven young adults in the parish show up and they are so on fire and so excited about being involved in the parish, giving all kinds of ideas of things we can do to attract and to maintain the faith of the next generation, those in college age to 35, and it was a really great time. So thanks be to God, and that's wonderful. And I'll also be meeting tomorrow afternoon with four young people who are gonna be help putting together our St. James Youth Group. So we're gonna be getting together a St. James Youth Group and get our young people back together over here. We have a COVID plan and the post-COVID plan. So that's tomorrow putting that, putting that together. So another thing, another great thing happening here is getting the young people, the young adults, and our youth back involved. And maybe we'll even do a junior high youth group. So who knows? Uh, the foundation work continues, so keep praying for that. We, uh, they were making such great progress that we had rain and then we had snow in October. They keep telling me about global warming. I'm waiting for it. Please, global warming, please come. That'd be nice. They keep making empty promises. <laughs> um, check the website for the daily winners for the calendar raffle. So every morning starting tomorrow, I'll be posting the winner of the, I'll be pulling the name on the, on the video of the winner for the calendar raffle. It'll be posted on the website, but we'll also call you to let you know uh, the prize. So um, that starts tomorrow morning. Uh, you'll see at the entrances of the church, there's pink slips. And on each of those pink slips, there is an order form for our St. James masks. It looks just like mine. It says St. James. It will have your name on it, so you can personalize it with your name. It's a $10 donation, and then uh, I think half of that will go then to a parish, kind of a parish fundraiser. By the way, our calendar raffle did fantastic. We raised over $9,000 with the calendar raffle. So praise God, that was a wonderful gift. And uh, so a little extra now with the mask. We all need masks, so it's uh, a nice kind of colored mask. You can choose if you want pink or gray or blue. And so um, you have the order form there, you can fill it out at the door. Uh, our confirmation is November 9th, it's coming up, so pray for our confirmation students, especially next Sunday when they make their confession before confirmation. So lots of prayers for next Sunday. And then on Monday will be their confirmation, November 9th. Monday is All Saints Day, this Monday, so uh, please feel free to come to Mass. I'll have Mass at 8 a.m., 12 p.m., and then again at 7 p.m. We'll have Mass for All Souls, so feel free to come to Mass that day and pray for our deceased uh, parishioners, but also your deceased loved ones uh, for that day. Uh, Tuesday, there'll be Eucharistic Adoration all day for Election Day from 8.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m., closing with benediction at 8.30 p.m. 
If you can sign up for one of the hours to come by and pray that day, that'd be wonderful. Or just stop in for a few minutes and pray. But please feel free to come by and pray for our country. I'm kind of worried about the possibility of violence that day. I'm watching how certain cities are boarding up their stores already, getting worried about violent reaction to the election. So, um, so let's, let's come into the church and pray that there be peace in our country. Uh, remember this week coming up, First Friday Devotions on Friday, First Saturday Devotions on Saturday. And please see the website and the bulletin for everything else. I know it's a lot of announcements, but like I said, that's a good thing. That means we're growing and we're back up and alive, we're moving and the parish is doing so well. So I'm very, very happy and so grateful to all of you and how you're so beautifully responding to God's grace and uh, especially during these COVID times, it's, it's wonderful. And um, I think for Halloween, I'm gonna get my set of cat ears like this one over here. Uh, be neat, right? Yes. <laughs> Please stand. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in that. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.